Hi there. It's April in the UK now and it's finally starting to warm up a bit, which means my body starts to come out of hibernation. I decided that I would like to have a go at some Japanese joinery and uh, where better to start than the Rising Sun Dovetail. I had no intention on filming this because I knew I'd make loads of mistakes, but then I thought maybe this is a good opportunity to show you my first attempt at cutting something like this and show you that nobody gets it right the first time. We all make mistakes. Trust me, I make loads of mistakes. I did watch quite a few videos on learning how to do this. The one that I found to be most most useful was uh, Theo Cook at Robinson House Studio Furniture School. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. It's such a detailed video, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, so for this exercise I'm gonna use uh, some maple and some cherry both of these are exactly the same dimensions they're both 25 mil thick and 82 mil wide the 82 is a very technical dimension it's literally where it ended up when i was playing in it really doesn't matter on this one as long as the joint fits within so i was getting some tools ready to do this and watching the video over and over um there's a lot of tools involved in this I'm starting off with chisels. Utterly butchered, utterly butchered, but I need the thin, thin profile. Old chisels, don't worry. This is where it got interesting because the amount of sliding bevels you have determines the size of this joint you can make, um, as in how many actual tails. I've only got three bevels. This limits the amount of lobes you can actually cut on the joint. I've only got three, as you can see, but three very different types, especially in price. We'll talk about that during. Marking gauge, fresh blade. Marking knife, fresh blade, dovetail saw, 20 teeth per inch, good old Veritas. Um, not using a Japanese saw for this, I struggle to hold them. Um, fret saw, where should we put that? Let's put that there. Little square. Mallet. Something to stop the size of the Veritas chisels, tearing your fingers to pieces. I have sanded them already, but there we go. Double-sided tape. Something to tidy up with, keep the area clear. And we drop, keeping that close. So, yeah. Quite a lot of tools, isn't it? Let's give it a go. Can't wait. So I'm following the instructions in the video. Uh, I've drawn it out. And it um, actually references from 20 mil higher. Now this distance here, I believe, determines the actual, how thin the profile gets or how wide it comes. I've decided 20 mil because why not? It looks okay. That is drawn exactly to the dimensions of our stock. So before I try and set up these angles, what I need to do is label these bevels so there's no confusion. Um, I've already labeled them on the paper, one, two, three, and it's mirrored the other side. So a bit of masking tape on each of them. So the cheapest one here, uh, the faithful one, it's does exactly what it needs to do. I've managed to rub off my number one. 
try again. Use pencil. Anyway, very basic, but it doesn't need to be anything else. Simple, does the job, yeah? Smaller ones of these, we have problems. The wing nut sometimes protrudes out past the side, so when you're actually trying to mark up, it can be in the way. It can be a bit of a pain, but essentially, it just does what it says. Shinwa, Japanese, and you'll notice this one is tensioned at the base. And this keeps it nicely out of the way. I like that. And here's the biggest waste of money I've ever had. Um, I love the tensioning on this. But this is a very expensive piece of kit. That These do exactly what this does. Okay, this has got a few extra features on it, but you don't need it. However, the tensioning, I like that. I've now transferred them over to these, those angles, onto these bevels. Um, I'm not particularly happy that the way I've done it because I don't like doing things by eye. Um, it's not accurate, and if anything, this needs to be accurate. Um, I paused it just a minute ago because I, I decided that the best way to do this, to set these up themselves, was would be to make a block. Okay, so. Let me explain what I've done. I've got the 25 mil thickness and this is our 20 mil. I'm just using this to set the bevels up. Um, I've marked the centre and I decided that my spacing would be eight mil. So I've done four mil off from each centre and then I've spaced it out eight millimetres. Okay, then from the centre, I need to use these to set up on this now, okay? Okay, so first things first, let's do number one. Faithful one. Loosen that off, and I need to line this one up. Glasses will help. Vision. Highly overrated. Right. Get this almost biting, so it's uh, easier to adjust. Put that there. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to tighten that up. And that is exactly where number one will stay now. Just put them there. So next one, Shinwa. This is for number two. Why didn't I just use the inside? <laughs> I'd use the inside of the other one. My thing, bring it up, line it up. Yeah, that's good. Let's do that up. Okay, that's the shin one, number two. And then we use the Bridge City for number three. Okay, Bridge City one done. That was awkward. I'm sure that would have been easier if I'd actually made this wider. Um, but now I have one, two, and three, set up. So I don't need that anymore. So I've decided the cherry's gonna be the first working piece. Uh, I've got my reference marks all on there. Uh, the maple will be the pins, if that's the term, um, all marked up as well, okay? What we need to do is have those two together, marked on the same side, and we need to attach our, our marking out blocks. Like I said, so the first piece, of, if it's the tails, um, we use the 20 mil spacer. Why didn't I make them same? Oh, idiot. Right. And for the second cut is the 20.3. The 0.3, uh, according to the video, gives us the interference we need for it to be a nice tight fit. We'll see. <laughs> What we need to do, uh, we need to double side tape those in place. So Tessa, double side tape, great stuff. Okay, so they need to go. They're like so, but they need to raise them up because I didn't make them the same thickness. Idiot. 
things out of the way. Use the flat bench to do this, and what we're going to do is flip them over. Yeah, that glue on there that will then make them flush. Just flip that over, flip that over. That's how it's going. Now, what we need is to make sure this is butted up. I'm going to use my straight edge here just to line things up for a minute. Okay. They'll be lined up like so. So, let's take this off. Oh, come on. Cute. 20, face down. And a reference up against there. on same with this one going down that way okay should be those in place on there from our reference edges nice just bring that there for now now what we need to do is mark a center point um, for both of them, all referencing off of one edge for this to line up properly. So, okay, setting the marking gauge up to 41. 41. Yeah. Okay, let's do that up. Now I'm not just I'm not just gonna assume that is exactly the centre, I'm gonna check it, I'm gonna check it on this end. And where are we gonna do that look? Make a mark, turn it round. Are those lines in the same place? No. We need to make a small adjustment. It needs to be made slightly longer. Let's try that. Not quite, a little bit more. This helps you find the true, true center of the piece because this might not be exactly 82. Uh, it looks it, but it's it's probably slightly off. Um, nice, I like that. So, from these reference edges, we need to mark the centre. We know these are lined up as we want them. What I'm going to do is mark the centre on that one. the center on this one okay we need to check that those line up as they do line up perfectly so now we can go on and use that as a reference to then mark everything else out start with this board the tail board is that I'm assuming we call them tails should do more research shouldn't I so we now need to put these markings across onto this. First things first, what I should have done before I put this on was mark my shoulder line. Uh. However, it's just with a pencil for now. We need to mark 25 down. Um, and this is just as a reference for now. Um, where's my ruler? Again, this isn't to be accurate. This is just for marking out. Um, I will use a marking gauge. Square. Okay. Might as well do that here at the same time. Okay. 
you see that line. line. I want to transfer this centre line down to here. Um, this is obviously a trial joint, you know, I'm not really worried if there's too many, if there's more marking lines than need to be. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna use the the, the already set up bevel because I know that's gonna put it in exactly the right place. Okay, and now we're gonna use those. You see that? Yeah. We can mark out now the distances, the eight mils that I was talking about. So I'm gonna mark them both out at the same time, as far as this is concerned. need to go four mil either side of the center line what we should do is set it up like this four four So there's our eight. We're now going to walk that out. So we want that's our number one bevel. That's our number two bevel. And that's our number three bevel. We'll walk it the other way. Number two bevel. Number three bevel. Same to that one. Okay, so they're all set out. Um, I'm gonna mark them so I don't get confused at any point. So this is one, two, three. So from here, we can now use our bevels to mark out. Okay, so I'm now going to use the bevels to mark the angles onto each board. Um, yeah. Let's do the cherry first. This one's with a 20 mil spacer. So number one, yeah? I'm going to put my knife on the centre mark there. Bring this over. I didn't need to do that, did I? Didn't need to mark these out because if these are already set up. Okay, right. Do it anyway. So if these are set up where you want them, like I did on this board here, this other board, I didn't really need to mark them out as I did here because this is the correct angle. So anyway. Let's see how they line up, see if I've uh, done this correctly. Let's bring that over. Because I'm obviously using the bevel all the way across, I'm going to trust that over anything else. It's quite awkward. These want to be fairly, fairly deep cuts. You'll see why later. I think it's going to be a lot more beneficial. Okay, so that's number one. But we do that on both sides. Okay. Put my knife into the centre point, bring the bevel across, make sure it's all firm and lined up, and. Gentle score at first. So you let it move then. For this joint, we're very reliant on these bevels being in the correct position. So you'll be careful, take your time. Okay, so that's number one done on that. So you've got to be careful because these knives will slip across metal so easily. Take your finger out, thumb, 
light score at first. You notice how these aren't lining up with my markings. So the marking out of these at the bottom wasn't necessary because I'd made that, that other block. Good to know. Okay. Now bevel number three. The problem I have with this bevel is the cost. And it was the result of a bottle of red wine. Um, a long time ago however it does it's got all these other features but i don't use them um it's kind of a pointless one for the price if you don't use all these other features however that that's good i like that if you've got any suggestions by the way stick them in the comment i do read them and i'm quite happy for criticism Constructive criticism. Don't be horrible. Okay. So there we go. On that board, we've got them marked out. So the best thing to do now is to mark your waste. So, our waste is going to be three, four, three tails that we're keeping. I'm going to mark it out on here now. However, this one is the 20.3. It's ever so slightly longer, which is going to make these ever so slightly different to these. And according to the track, the video I've watched, that will help these fit better. However, this is me cutting them, so and it's a first attempt. So <laughs> let's just see, shall we? So <clears throat> we only need these these markers on here for this first part of marking out, okay? So I can actually now take those off, he says. Okay, so the reason I need more bevels if I wanted to do more tails is because these bevel, so this number one is now going to be transferred across the top and then across the back. So I couldn't have, I didn't, I wouldn't have wanted to loosen off those bevels halfway through doing this just to do some extra lobes, tails, um, because I'd have had to have reset the bevels and then I'm going to, I know I'll lose accuracy. Maybe other people won't, but I will. Number one bevel has come that way. But what we're actually going to do now is keep that. We're going to go across the top from the front. So, if I put my knife into the number one. Now, I haven't got much purchase there. So, what I think I'll do is come around the other side. Put my knife in the mark. Slide this over, do a gentle score, a slightly heavier score, and a much heavier score. Now we need to do the same, I think, <laughs> this way. one so this one feels a lot more sturdy i know we're slightly further along but it does feel a lot more sturdy on there this bevel number three feels pretty sturdy on there again but it's further across okay i'm gonna make a mark just to help me line these up there's no point making a mark this way it, it's got to be this way okay I'm hoping that should 
make it easier. Hmm? Okay, so let's knock out a waste on here. suggested in the video that you want to make these as deep as possible so I'm going to put this back in the vise. So now I've done the light marks it's suggesting the video that we do heavier heavier marks across the grate because they do disappear but now that we've done the light mark our knife won't stray. Bit concerned about that line there. Um, However, the first attempt, isn't it? So that is our board finish there, all marked up. Ready to go. Front and on the back. So notice how wide they come out at the back. Now I'll do the same for the, uh, the maple. Right, so now, last thing, we want to mark our shoulder lines round. These are the same thickness, so I'm going to use these as the reference for setting this up. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that one up first, and then you can just do this one up. That is our shoulder. So, okay, now we only need to go across all the way around on this one. Didn't need to go. I didn't need to go all the way around. This one, I need to go all the way around on. Really mark your waist down on this, you're gonna have to. There's so much going on. Okay, now time to get the chisels out. Right, so what we're gonna do now, next step in the video, is we're actually gonna use the chisel on the waist side to come into those deep marks and make a wedge in that way to preserve our sharp lines. Okay, I'll zoom you in. Staying on the waist side, going up to the line. Dunk. Look at that. There we go. Okay. Everything's marked out. Everything's been shaded for waist, and I've used a chisel to go up to every single line to give me a, a clean, clean shoulder line and clean marks, clean lines up against the uh, the edges that I'm going to be cutting into the waist. Done the same here, yeah? Hopefully. I mean, I'm quite confident this is going to be a great way of doing it. Um, let's see, it's the next, next is everyone's favourite part. Okay, we're in the vice. The wrong way round. There we go. Turn the camera angle. Yeah. Okay, we're in the vice. What we have to do now is the bit everyone, well, not everyone, the bit I dread because personally, my soaring skills are temperamental, shall we say. I have a lot of off days, and as this is an honesty video, I'm going to put some wax on the saw. And all I can say is, I'm sorry, 
Um, enjoy. Let's get this light in the right place. This is really raw videos, isn't it? There we go. And, well, here we go. Gosh. I'm going to establish the line across the top first, as I would with any delto. Like so. And then we've got to find the angle, the compound angle. I'm sort of treating this like I would a mortise and tenon, to be honest. I'm just trying to cut the two sides that I can see first. And then... Hopefully, I'm not going to be breaching. I think I'm going to be very grateful of doing those uh, relief cuts with the chisel because I'm pretty sure I would have gone really offline then. It's not the best cut. Mm, beeswax. Wonderful. Mm. <laughs> Let's do the other one. I like to do the same process on all pieces. It's, it's for me. It, it, I seem to get better at it as I do it. So I like to repeat the same process instead of going on to the, doing all the extra stuff on this and then going back and doing the same on the other. I like to just do the same again. Don't worry. I'll fast forward it. I need to have the. Sp you need the space come down here so leg vice wonderful have I done all of that no right so I've got to keep going saw me sharpening Shrenik please come visit <laughs> please okay it's all of those cut um, look. Right. Absolutely shocking. Look how far away I am. Um, not bad. A few of them are alright. But I don't believe I've breached any lines, so. Hmm. Okay. Just keep going. say don't you look what I've done ah okay compound angles all right okay remember that that's a that's a oh I'm annoyed with myself I might get away with this because this is the inside edge. I'm just concerned that it might break off. Um, remember, cutting at an angle, <laughs> aren't you? Not straight through as we would with a standard dovetail. Okay, learning. Fretz all time, nice thin blade. Now, remember, remember, different angles.
I, I don't know how to uh, say this day's soaring went. It was a bit questionable. It really was. Um, sorry. The lighting is terrible, I know. Um, I'm going to have a lot of cleaning up to do. Um, but I'm going to have to be very careful not to breach any of those lines. I must have got removed there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I might just do this over a time lapse. Enjoy. Okay. So I'm not going to attack this in one go. I don't want to breach my lines. So I'm just going to straight away use those lines to my advantage. Am I allowed to claim that if it's really bad joint that it's because of the silly angles I had to stand up because of the camera? Let me know what you think. Okay, so I've finished doing the chisel work in here, but there still needs to be a little bit more clean up on the inside because if uh, they can't be binding on the inside when they're um, when I'm trying to fit these together. Um, so if anything, I'd like to undercut it slightly on the inside faces. Um, but first, I'm gonna go with this first. I think this will do it anyway. 180 grit, and then I've got some 240. I might even just start with the 240. We'll try it, see what happens, and just. So, so we can get in there and really flatten these faces. Hopefully that will make the joint slide together really nicely. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Right, let's have a look. Let's see if it fits, shall we? I'm not sure if it's going to. Um, I promise you this is the first attempt. I've never done one of these before, so I've got... I've heard it's just... Mm, see, I'm baggy there. <laughs> That's what she said. Nope. <laughs> not yet. Okay. So there's some trimming needed now. I don't know if you can see, but where I was using the sand paper, the sandpaper, it's left sanded parts in the middle. So I think I'm going to use the chisel now to par those out. Did we really expect it to uh, fit first time? No. Nope. Let's give it another sand and see if there's any more high spots. There's going to be gaps on this, I can see it already. <laughs> Alright, let's go again. Where's it going to go? I know it's going to start because it's far too baggy there. I've learned that much. Ooh, but... Ooh. I'll tell you. <laughs> it's not... Too shabby. Not stopping this going all the way home. All I'm doing is leaving the shoulder lines exactly where they are and just making sure that all the cor all the sort of corners to the shoulder are crisp and clean because that will stop this homing properly. I'm going to have to do the same on the uh, tails as well. And then we'll have another go. Um, I 
think I know where the problem is. I think it's here. Okay, we've got high spots there, possibly. Well, not possibly. We have. So. Okay, let's try again. There we go. <laughs> Look at the gaps. <laughs> just had an afterthought. Let's just let's try and give it a, a little tap of the mallet and see if it actually seats it lower any than it is. Just using the leather end of my mallet. That's actually. <laughs> There we go, if in doubt, hit it with a hammer. Okay, so this is the finished drawing. Uh, I've used a mallet to put it together. Um, only, there's a few gaps, namely <laughs> that one. Not sure what went on there. I think that might be, um, that might go back as far as marking out. I think. Let's try harder. So we'll see one there. Again, I think I, I stuck to my line, so I really do think that I suppose it could be down to the sanding as well. All right, I'll try again. I'm thinking about doing this a bit more. Um, I like to try different things. Um, if there's a joint you'd like to see me do or challenge me to do, let me know in the comments. If you like what you've seen today, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.